MDP Channel, where advanced souls and spiritual seekers get inspired. Hello, welcome to the Oracles of Master Del Pe. Namaskar. Our program today is so interesting to many people. So this is the answer to many of your queries this month. It's about out-of-body experience, OBE. Is it real or is it fake? So today I'd like to illuminate you with the processes, the sequences, how it works, who are entitled to have OBE or out-of-body experience. Is it for everyone? Can even babies get out of body? Or can animals get out of body? Can old or young people have the same experiences? So these are all good questions which were sent to me. And I, I have to cover this in general uh, discussion first. Then I will open to many of your questions from this class. So out of body experience called OBE is very common in meditators, yoga practitioners, and even in spiritual uh, workouts. But today, I would like to declare to you that it is real. It is your daily work when you sleep. So when you say get out of body, what do you, what do you mean? What is the body and who gets out? Is that an interesting question? Who really gets out of body when you are out of body? So there must be some being in you or consciousness that really goes out of body. The question is, where is the portal? where you get out of body. Is it a portal of consciousness? When you sleep, do you get out of body through a certain portal of consciousness? So today I'd like to tackle these questions which has been addressed to me this past week. And so let's first de define what is out of body experience, OBE. Now, do you have a body, like a hardware if you were a computer, and you have also a software, which is your consciousness, which starts with your emotions, your mind, and even higher than your mind. So since your body is with the energy or vitality or all the human aura, there's something in you that, get out, that gets out of body when you are meditating or when you're sleeping. So if you hear people who are space cadets, have you heard this expression, you're a space cadet or something like that? What means to say uh, if you're a daydreamer or you're a meditator and you're always spaced out, they call you a space cadet. So why do you call it space cadet? Because you're spaced out. If you're spaced out and like in a dream world or imagina uh, imagination uh, experience, sometimes there's something in you, your conscience, that gets out of body. So your body your energy, your emotions, and your mind are all intertwined consciousness. So when you are in a hypnagogic hallucination or state where you're about to sleep, something is happening that you are exiting through a certain consciousness portal. And if you were very tired and uh, you want to sleep, sometimes instead of getting out of body, you fall into an abyss, like suddenly you fall and, you, and something, or you kick, as if you're an, uh, unable to eject out. So these are all experiences in the process of getting out of body when you don't have enough energy and when you're exhausted. There's not much energy to eject you out of your physical and uh, energy body. So who gets out of body in the first place? So your consciousness, which is from the mental from the emotional energy field, is the one that gets out. It's not really getting out. It's already more out than your physical because your aura in the mind level is bigger than your physical. Your emotional aura or your feelings are bigger than your physical field. Therefore, the expression of out of body is more a term that will say that your emotional and mind's aura are extracted somewhere else in a dimension where they can play without the interference of the physical body. So that is where you get out of body. Now the question is, where do you get out? Does your aura just move out suddenly? Does your body just like 
stay put and then something is getting out of it? Well, that is the secret really. When you say get out of body, there are portals where you exit. In normal human beings, it is the solar plexus. Especially those who have nightmares, night terrors, or bad dreams. They usually get out of the portal here in the stomach. And people who die also, and they usually are negative people who are they emotional, or they're angry, they have a lot of fears, and so much violence and criminality. This energy field in the stomach area is the portal where they get out. And this is the portal to a lower world in the inner realm or an inner world. So this is one of the most common for most human beings. Like people who were raped in their dreams or they were molested or they were castigated or they were violently harassed in this bad dream, uh, they usually get out of here when they sleep. Especially if you overeat before you sleep, this energy field is open and active. And so this is the easiest portal for your emotional and mental connections to get out of your body. Now in more saintly people, including those who are meditating at the crown or the spiritual center, the easiest way to exit usually for spiritual people is through the crown. So there's a portal on top of the head called the spiritual chakra or the crown center where the consciousness releases itself and expands outward and relocate itself to different worlds or realms. So when you get out of here, even during the dying process, you go out to the heavenly world or something more advanced, something more refined and so on. Now if you are a mental person and you are thinking a lot before you sleep, you intend to get out of body here in the midbrow chakra or the ajna because this is what is most stimulated when you are about to sleep and so you get out of here and you go to the mind's realm or the mental frequency dimensionality. So there are many portals by which you can exit. So when you say out of body experience, it is not unusual. You do it every day when you sleep, except that different people have different uh, dimensions to go to. When you are meditating and so on and, and doing spiritual work, sometimes you just go out of body and you sometimes you do like this or you go down and tend to be, uh, seem like you're sleeping. But these are just out of body experiences. So it is a typical experience for meditators when they're meditating, especially those who are mystical or those who are more advanced, they can get out of body to the crown and expand their consciousness. Thereby there is a, uh, it's like a teleportation of consciousness or expansion of consciousness that allows you to either jerk, expand, feeling asleep during meditation or even during watching a boring movie or something like that. So we get out of body every night, almost every night when we sleep, except if you have insomnia where you go to a stage one only and you don't go out of body. That's why it's very tiring when you don't sleep deep. So we'll be talking about all of this later on. Uh, it depends on your questions today. Now, so the question is who gets out of body? during the OB. Your consciousness, your mind, your emotions are the one that gets out. The aura of these facets of you, your mind, your thought processes, your emotional processes are the one that goes out of your body. Your body and your aura will stay in bed, your brain will stay in bed, and your consciousness expands and exit through these different portals, I said earlier, through the chakras, and therefore you experience something different than you're being, being aware or being physical. So that is why I would say that OBE is for everyone. It's not only for those who are meditating. Even the babies can get out of body when they're sleeping. And I tell you, even your dogs and your cats, when they're sleeping, they get out of body. That's why they tend to go to a dream state. So uh, from here, I'd like to open up questions so that uh, the whole group from this class can also point out any of your experiences or you can ask questions that can elucidate uh, certain kind of sequences in your own experiences. So is there any question from this class? Okay, when people die, what happens to them? Is that also an out-of-body experience, OBE? 
there are many levels of dying. At least there are four stages of death also. The first death is when you die from your physical body and your aura starts to dissipate and disintegrate. Then you go and, and live in the inner world emotionally. Or for scientists, they are more in the mental realm. For mystics and emotional people, they normally live in domicile in the emotional plane or astral plane, as they say. So depending on your polarity and your, uh, your development, you reside in the inner world through your different auras as your vehicle. So your absence of the physical and the aura, you are, your consciousness now is residing on the emotional consciousness in your astral body or your emotional body and your mind's aura is now your domicile in the thought level and awareness on the thinking level. So, and then afterward you die also from the emotional and then you reside totally in the mental world until you totally die also in the mental realm and then you go to nirvana or in an, I would say, inactivity state where you don't have any more mind, whether you have emotions, you don't have a physical and you don't have an aura, so there's no activity at the personality level and ego level. So you are dead totally from this and you are born of this higher realm at the soul level. Okay? So that is a process of discarnation. So when you die, okay, I don't mean you die now, but in the process of dying, you discard your physical body and your aura and suddenly you cannot get back. See, so the difference of meditation and sleep is when you get out of body during sleep time and you have a nightmare and you're being uh, you know, choked by a python or you're being you ran uh, by a criminal and or you're being molested or something like that, you wish to wake up and when you wake up you escape the inner world's torture or persecution. So that is why most people can escape the bad dreams by being by waking up. And that's why they wake you up and, and you're like shouting and or like fighting and then you, you wake up and then you escape the inner world. So, so that is why when you go to the physical world, you move away from the inner world. When you sleep and get out of body, you become a resident of the inner world and a real world and you are now not in the physical world. You see? So it's like that. So out of body through the dying process have also different stages. But the first stage really is when your soul wants to pull the plug because there are three seats of the soul in your body. Uh, through the crown center inside your brain to the pineal gland at the mental frequency. If you connect your ears and here, there's a junction called the seat of the soul at the mental level. And in here, near the sinoatrial node of the heart, is the seat of the soul at the physical and energy realm which houses your, uh, your DNA and genetic codes and so on. And further into the solar plexus near the tip of the liver is the seat of the soul at the emotional level frequency. So when somebody dies, the soul pulls the plug out of the physical level. So your two other points sitting the soul stays with you as your uh, leftover ego and personality where you reside in consciousness level. So you get out of body but do not return anymore. But you know that you are the same person, you have the same fear, the same happiness, the same mindset, the same ambition and so on, and same vanities as well. But you're unable anymore to contact your family through physical means. So you, as you have seen the ghost story and other films about uh, the inner world when people die suddenly, sometimes they don't recognize they're dead. So they're still out of body and cannot return. Even they want to talk to their family. I said, of course, there's no voice at the physical, uh, physical plane, but they are still mentally connected. That's so you can sense people, the presence of people who died. Or in, uh, say, uh, clairvoyance, you can sense people who are around you by their presence, the presence of beings, angelic beings or ghosts and so on. So you can feel the presences around you when you are sensitive or clairvoyant. So when you get out of body, you can return during sleep time and meditation. When you get out of body during the death process, you cannot get back at the physical level. 
the, uh, the connection to the brain from the mind is pulled out, so there's no more returning, which is different from a comatose. When a person is in a coma, the thread of light is extracted, but there's still a small link. Therefore, the person is not dead physically, because there's still a sustainable life force that comes from the soul that's not totally pulled out. But the connection from the mind to the brain it is pulled out temporarily until the person totally dies physically. So that's the difference between a comatose person who sleep and a person who totally die. So when humanity will learn all of these processes and the sequences, they will not be afraid to die, they will be re when they are ready to die, they will put the plug consciously, like what gurus and advanced masters do, they can die at will during the preordained time they want to die, a certain timing. The question we usually is asking, uh, ask usually is, where, did, where do you go when you die? Or when you get out of body, where do you go? Like there are people who are know that there's an astral travel or emotional, body will travel somewhere else, but you're still within the emotional realm and frequencies and dimensions. So you can get the seven levels of frequencies in the emotional plane. Most of people who go to purgatory exit to the portal of the solar plexus when they die, and the frequencies that are of the lower, like say, if there are seven layers on the fourth, to around fifth, somewhere. The purgatory world is like frequency dimensions. Hell is in the lowest bottom of that frequency of emotional world, which is like all red and heat and fire. That's why it's like a damnation when you are in that lower world because that's the dirtiest part of the earth, closer to the central part of the bosom of the earth or the core of the earth where there's also physical molten uh, lava and so on that is also characterized by physical heat and fire, and the inferno or the hell world, that frequency is of the lowest frequency of the seven levels, it's on the bottom of six and seven frequencies. It's like a sediments of the dirtiest kinds of emotions and criminality and all kinds of vanities are all, all uh, incubated. That's why it's like a very, very, it's like a dungeon of substance made of, of uh, all the negativities. Whereas the first heaven is more on the higher planes, like around the first, the highest three frequencies of the emotional world is like the first heaven. So when a person died who are very positive and high frequency people who have done good in, in life with goodwill, good intentions, uh, loving kindness, good naturedness and service and so on, they usually go straight out of purgatory frequency and they go to the higher frequencies of the emotional plane called the first heaven. And the more mental type of people who, are, uh, who have lived a good life and had helped m most of humanity go to the higher frequencies and even go to the higher mental plane which is called the seventh heaven. So these are all frequencies and dimensions and inner world domain which can qualify by people's frequencies when they die, their aura belongs to a certain frequency where they belong to be a residence of those dimensions again. So when you die, you get out of body and do not come back. And then another get out of body in the second death and on the third death and so on. All right, so uh, I hope I have answered the question on the death, dying process and on the out of body experience. Anything else? So. These are all things that you can do without a gift. You can learn how to get out of body. And you can study my Inner Powers book. It's, one my, it's the first book I've written. And it has the 10 psychic powers of humanity. And one of them is out of body experience and how to do it deliberately to go in the inner world to be able to channel the highest ideas possible for your development and bring it to humanity as a project as a non-profit uh, work or any kind of ideas that is for entrepreneurs or for thinkers as well, or for parents if you have problems and solving family issues and so on. So uh, you can attend also my classes uh, online, one and a half hours to two hours, to learn how to get our body consciously at will and also when you sleep consciously exit to the inner world from sleep, from non-sleep to sleep, you can constantly exit and be in control of your dream state 
Or you can learn clairvoyance, telepathy, and all the more advanced psychic powers from that book. But you can visit at, uh, in our website, masdelpe.com, and learn all of these, okay? So I hope today, Oracles of Master Del Pei delivered you the out of experience, and I hope you have enriched your consciousness to be able to learn the real science and methodical ways of getting out of body to be functional in the inner world as if it is a physical world, and to get these ideas to bring it as I uh, bring them as part of your next steps and coloring and enriching your new, new purpose in life. So again. I would like to see you again in my lectures and future oracles of Master Dolpe. Namaskar to all of you.